Hello, yes. This week I'm reviewing Devon, a found footage type horror film written and directed by somebody from Jersey Shore. Yes, I'm sure this will be spoken about in the same breath as Blair Witch in years to come. On the plus side, it's a very short film at just 70 minutes. The film opens with a man making a speech about the asylum the film would be set in. He's throwing around the R word like nobody's business. He also sounds very bored. The asylum opened, producing a new beginning for the mentally retarded. We then get two young hoodies breaking into the asylum. They call each other bro a lot, so you can tell this was written by someone who has never so much as taken a bus in their lives. The two teenagers of indeterminate gender explore around a bit and find a creepy doll on a chair, and then some random toys before one of them picks up a video camera and plays what sounds like a recording of the latest Mrs. Murdoch seeing her husband naked for the first time. An older girl scares them then by screaming and all three quickly exit the premises. Then we get the film title. Devon is pretty scary, as anyone who's ever been to a Torquay nightclub could attest. Now, I've watched a hell of a lot of true crime interrogations, and I've never seen one filmed in this style. I hope she asks to see their badges first. She states her name is Alison and begins recapping the previous events. William here explains that the parents of a missing teenager have offered $100,000 if five people go to the abandoned asylum their daughter Devon was last seen at in the year 2000. He says she was born in 1986, but here it says 1987. No, this doesn't have any bearing on the plot, but it shows just how much Ms. J. Well pays attention to detail, doesn't it? Carly is your stereotypical obnoxious princess who needs the money because daddy cut her off. Next we meet Cat, played by a young Brian May who is arguing with her daughter, who doesn't want her mother to go off to a creepy asylum with a bunch of strangers for some reason. Cat cares not. Jared now, who is compelled to clamber out of his teenage wank den to go and get his share of a hundred grand. They really did a great job of making his bed look disgusting. And what the hell are these for? Once the gang meet up at the asylum, we get to see the fifth member, Alison, from the beginning of the film. They stand around having banal chats and sort of introducing each other. I'm going to hazard a guess that this is the first time any of the actors have met each other too. They enter the building and the door immediately slams shut. <coughs> they start to shriek and bicker and then decide to carry on into the scary building rather than say, wait by the entrance and phone or shout for assistance. The party decide to set up camp at the last place Devin was spotted in the asylum where they proceed to bicker in between giving their backstories. Everybody shares, aside from Alison, which the rest view is highly suspicious. Jared and poor little rich girl go off to explore, and Jared finds a hypodermic needle, which is troubling for him given his history of substance abuse. They find some toys dotted around, while separately Alison starts freaking out into the camera. I've seen Screamfest shorts with better pacing than this. Alison sees Devon written in red paint everywhere and gets more and more freaked out. This will be important later on, if you're still watching. She accuses Cat and William of having done it, but they just laugh for their bitch about her. When the group is all back together, they discover that it's suddenly 3am despite it being light outside mere moments ago. William produces a Ouija board because why not pack in as many cliches as you can? And in the interrogation, Alison realises that this was the moment they let the bad spirits in. A baby can be heard crying, which makes everyone excited, and then some whistling starts. Something invisible charges the group and they all scatter in different directions. It's probably worth pointing out that the budget for this film seems to be equivalent to a McDonald's breakfast ordered via Uber Eats, without the tip. Now the gang starts to get picked off one by one at f***ing last. Cat hears the voice of her daughter and finds her teddy bear which the film shows us in a quick flashback in case your memory resets every 15 minutes. She chases the voice some more before getting her snotty Blair Witch style close up. Speaking of ripping off Blair Witch, she then finds Elle standing in the corner before death by spinny camera. 
William is looking for Cat, but gets chased by this ghost girl and then just disappears faster than his future acting prospects. Carly finds a second camera in Alison's possession and is furious. She then runs off to also get killed by the ghost. Jared hears his name being called and then finds his mum, or someone taking her appearance, ready with a nice big syringe of Afghanistan's finest and then gets ghost OD'd to death. Now we cash up to the start of the film and back at the police station, or this wall backdrop anyway, we discover that Dr. Allison set the whole thing up as she is a psychology student who needed test subjects who were a bit unhinged. She reveals that Devon never existed and she made the whole thing up. She then warns the policemen not to go and try and find the bodies, but they go anyway and then the film ends. Never has just over an hour felt so long. Overall, I would not recommend the film Devon, and I sincerely hope nobody involved ever graces my screen again. Bye then.